Thank you, Candice. Welcome to St. Peter's in person as well as virtual service uh, for Wednesday, November 3rd. We're glad you could be here. Thank you. Uh, and our service begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. That's the book with the little cross on it. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, His kingdom now and forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me on page 356 in reciting the Gloria at the top of page 356. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. O oh Lord Jesus, Son of God, O oh God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect of the Day is proper 26, found on page 235, or in your worship booklet. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. First reading is from Romans 13, verses 8 through 10. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is fulfilling of the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us recite in unison the appointed psalm for the evening, Psalm 112, Book of Common Prayer, page 755. Hallelujah. Happy, Happy are, are they who fear, who fear the, the Lord, Lord and have, have great, great delight in his commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation, the generation of the upright will be blessed. Be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. For they will never be shaken. The righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is right. They, they put, put their, their trust, trust in the Lord. Lord. Their, heart their heart is established and will not shrink until, until they see their desire upon their enemies. They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness, and righteousness stands, stands fast, fast forever. forever. They will hold up their head with honor. The wicked will see it and be angry. They will gnash their teeth and pine away, for the desires of the wicked will perish. Please stand. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now large crowds were traveling with him, and he turned and said to them, 
Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish it, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. For what king going out to wage war against another king will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot then, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. Please have a seat. So as many of you know, I've come back from two weeks of a bit of a mini vacation or kind of a mini sabbatical actually. And things have changed significantly. When I left, it was summer. When I came back, it's winter. I used the fan in my office. Uh, when I left today, I had the heater on. So things shifted pretty quickly. And I spent a lot of time kind of just thinking about some of the deeper issues, giving myself time to really ponder some of the things that I don't have enough time to do when caught up in the daily life of running the church. And something that's very important to me is kind of listing out what, my, what I believe, what my core beliefs are, so that when I'm up here in front of you I'm, and, and giving sermons or talking to you in Bible study or something, there's a consistency to it. I think it's real important that it not just be what that day's message is, but that it have some sort of longevity. And so I did some things like immerse myself in some of the creeds, uh, read a couple of books, read one book, or uh, read the majority of a book, a 1950 book by Eric Fromm, who's a psychoanalyst, called Psychoanalysis and Religion. So that was very interesting. And, and you know, didn't really make far much headway, but who would expect? I mean, this is, it's a lifelong project to do this. So, uh, but I kind of wish I had seen today's reading in Romans. Because I think, what amazing, what, what better place is there to start in terms of your faith and your belief than with love? What better place is there to end in terms of your faith and belief? With love. This is really what he says repeatedly in this short reading is it's all about love. I mean, you know, we hear it all the time. Love, love, love. All you need is love. What the world needs is love. Love is the drug. I could go on. I could keep. I'm sure you could too. I'm sure you could add a few. But he's talking about love, and the, the fancy Greek word for it is agape. And what that means is, and what he tells us, and it comes from a Leviticus citation, Leviticus 19, uh, chapter 19, verse 18, is love your neighbor as yourself. So it, a couple of notes in there. It starts with the love of the self. Now, this is not about arrogant preening love of self. It's about a humble love of self. But it is about you know, recognizing that we are beloved children of God, made by God and called good. And so this is not some sort of dualistic flesh is bad or individual is bad. This is about love of self. It's grounded in that. And the reason we love our neighbor is because we have, as believers, an inexhaustible debt uh, because it comes from the infinite love that we get as believers that's recognized from Christ, from God and Christ, and from what God and Christ did for us. So, so we have this enormous debt that because we are loved, yet, and the way we pay that debt, we're loved by God from the creation, we're re that's reaffirmed in, the, in, in Christ's passion and resurrection, we are called to love our neighbor love our neighbor as ourselves. That's how we repay the debt. There is no part of Christian life that stands outside of love. So if you're ever in doubt, what should I believe? It goes back to love. And I think, I, again, I wish I had known that a couple of weeks ago because it did sort of clarify things. It pulls things together and say, what's the action that is love? Now, easy enough to say, you know, yeah, we should love your neighbor. And, and then, you know, what do I do with that? It's very difficult to bring that to life. And what, what Paul thinks 
I think, or what some people say that Paul is suggesting in the Romans reading, is we put our play, we put ourselves in the position of our neighbor. And that neighbor be some maybe someone who we've heard to, someone we don't like very much, someone that opposes us, someone that would rather have us not around. But we put ourselves in the position of the neighbor and say, what would I want if I were in that position? So if I were some particularly reprehensible politician, what would I want? It takes that to a different level. Because it says, how am I, it gets to some basic needs of how do I want, what do I want out of life? And so it's not about what you should do when you love your neighbor. It is about this, what I'm calling a radical kind of empathy. It is radically putting yourself in the shoes of your neighbor, even if that's someone that opposes you, and try to seek out what they want. And I wonder if that's not what Jesus is referring to in the gospel when he talks about taking up the cross. Is taking up the cross this kind of radical empathy? Now, the gospel reading is confusing, I'll admit, because it opens with hate your family, which is shocking enough, uh, and then goes on to, you know, uh, you're a victim of poor planning, that is, you know, whether you're building a tower or waging a war. Uh, and then lastly, out of nowhere, it seems to be to say, you know, it's like give up all your possessions. And it's just like, what, wait a minute, what's going on? But if, if radical empathy is at, the, is at the core of this, then I start to understand what taking up the cross means. And it starts with this kind of self-emptying. And again, the fancy word for that is kenosis, that it's self-emptying. It's, it's emptying out yourself. Now, this is not self-denial. This is not, you know, you are called to love yourself. But it's emptying yourself out so that you can see what the other person, what your neighbor needs. And then completely giving ourselves over to what would I want in their situation. And that's where I, I mentioned the Eric Fromm book. He talks about some of the core needs that we as humans want. You know, and there is a core need that is to want to be seen, want to be accepted, want to be heard, to be comforted. And you can think of some of the other things that are core basic needs. So I go back to this particular, you know, let's take this, this uh, hypothetical politician that I'm not crazy about, at least not when I see him or her on the screen on television or hear quotes or read tweets. And I might say that, you know, that it's about their power or greed, or racism, or sexism, etc. But those aren't needs. Those, in fact, are sins. And we know what to do with sins. We know where to place sins. Sins live outside of, lo of love. So instead, we have a love-filled ethic. And so I see with that politician, what, what, does, what does he need? Is this a cry for being seen? A cry to be heard? To be comforted? And how do I meet that? And it's not easy. Best example I have is my little schnauzer, uh, who some of you know, little Josie, the white schnauzer, uh, who is crazy pandemic schnauzer, pandemic kid, but also just an amazing, loving, loving, loving dog. And so I, get, I take that, that love above everything else. And I take that, I get that from, from Josie. And I think it's funny, wouldn't it be just like God to demonstrate the love that we're supposed to follow in a, in a dog, in the love of a dog, because it's right there in front of us, in the love of a child, right there in front of us. So let's not complicate it. Let's get out of the way. So this love-filled ethic that, we're, that Paul's talking about, we're talking about tonight, is it's empty yourself. Get out of your own way. It's radical empathy. It's put yourself completely in someone else's shoes. What do they need? What do they need? What is this a cry for? And it's take up the cross through that radical empathy by getting out of our own way. And what's interesting is you find out it's all about love. You know, Tina Turner famously said, what's love got to do? It's, it's got everything to do with it. Everything to do with it. Thanks be to God. Amen. We'll continue with Prayers of the People, Form 3, which is on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer.
page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. May be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacrament. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Come to share. Let's pray for our own needs and those of others. I invite you to offer up prayers either aloud or in your heart. Pray for the people of Guatemala. Pray for those who are Catholic today. All saints from the church. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our service will continue on page 360 with the confession of sin. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I invite you to safely share the peace. 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 <laughs> Before we move to uh, the second part of uh, that with the Eucharist, you, some of you may not be familiar with our tradition if you've not been here for, uh, for uh, uh, all, all Saints Sunday, which we're celebrating this Sunday. We have a tradition of having flags around the nave of all those who have passed and people seek to, to remember. And uh, they're somewhat organized by, t by uh, date. So the later ones, I invite you to look at it either this weekend or after this service, here are some of the ones over the past several years. This Sunday, we will have an All Saints celebration that's, in addition to everything else, going to be bilingual uh, because we have our uh, Reverend uh, Roberto Amas is coming to uh, co-celebrate with me. But uh, we'll also honor the saints who have gone before us. It's a really beautiful tradition, so, and it's a beautiful service, so I encourage you to come. Walk in love as Christ loved us, gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Eucharistic prayer A continues on page, uh, starts on page 361. 
And I understand you've been kind of gathering around the altar up here. If you want to bring your prayer books and come up and trying to make this a little more intimate of a service. That's for the space. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. And sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And wherever you are on your journey of faith, know that you are welcome at God's table.
Our service continues with the post-communion prayer found at the bottom of page 365. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. As you leave here tonight, just remember that love is the answer. It's the beginning, it's the journey, and it's the end. And we are all called to love our neighbors as ourselves. And that means both our neighbors and ourselves. And may the blessing, the wonderful, amazing blessing of God, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.